What's up everybody? This is the Poker Coaching Study Session. Today we're going to be looking at a multi-way scenario. It's going to be cutoff opens, button flat calls, big blind calls as well at 50 big blinds. Last time we looked at ace high boards. Uh, today I want to look at king high boards. Uh, next time we'll look at queen high boards. Uh, so for now, the strategy for the big lines just to check, that's very standard. But when it comes to cutoff strategy, uh, the first thing we notice uh, is that say the cutoff is heads up at 50 big blind against the button. So this is going to be strategy. So he's going to bet like around, he's going to check 75% of the time, bet 25% of the time. Well, if we add the big blind basically uh, in this scenario, uh, the Cutoff now checks with everything in its range. So that's the first distinction that uh, I've noticed. So here, wow, heads up, cut off, that's 25% of the time, I guess. The button, if the big line falls, we now check 100% of the time. That's yeah, so the first thing I things. noticed. Uh, like the cutoff strategy is a pure checking strategy. Like he checks did, we, did, did you look at more than one king high flop in this? No, we're looking at this texture for now. Okay. Yeah. And we saw a similar thing yesterday uh, on Wednesday with, with the ace high flop we looked at. The oh, yeah. There's that, a lot to I'm look at. We yeah, just did. Taking a quick peek for this texture. Yeah. So pure check on the cutoff. So I think it makes a lot of sense, especially on a king high board where just cut off first button, we're checking a lot anyways on king high boards. And then now there's two key cards for the big blind as well. So our range is so wide and both villains connect with this board. So it makes sense to just check our whole range and then play an aggressive check raise strategy. Mm -hmm. So we check. And then afterwards, uh, the button is going to bet the, around 58% oh, wow. of the time. So do you guys think the button bets more often or less often? Or And why? I think it's kind of reasonable, honestly. I think it's kind of accurate. Well, I mean, that's what I expected. I, well, yesterday it bet, the other day it bet more, right? It bet 60, it bet 60%, right? And then the hand we looked at it, it was a high check, a super high check frequency texture. Um, and I think this is a high check texture too. Like this is going to check a lot. Button versus big blind is going to check this quite a bit as well, I think. So, I mean, if it holds true, I think he's just going to bet a decent amount small again because he's in absolute position and he gets to force the big blind to overfold so, and then play a pot in position versus cutoff. Yeah. But, yeah. He, he's also yeah. safe because the big blind is not going to check raise very much because the uh, guy who opened is still uncapped. Yeah, the big blind wait, strategy wait. is supposed to be pure call. Or yeah, are we talking about GTO or like what we see at the tables? I think big blinds check this somewhat for like, I see big blinds checking this with heart draws and straight draws and two pairs. Yeah, but he's Being not going to check. Raising. He's not check raising, right? No, not, not in GTO, but at the actual tables, I see that. Yeah, well, we're just doing it since. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Say we were heads up against that cutoff, the button would be checking 44% of the time. And now... Having the big blind in the hand, we now check 41%. The no, we bet more. We bet it's roughly the same, 3%. Yeah, similar, but it's a little bit. It's not as drastic as it switched from the A-side flop we looked at. Monday was uh, drastically betting more. Yeah. So it's, not, it's a minor difference here on this flop.
I forget what the ace high flop was. I think it might have been disconnected. It was ace ten something with with the flush draw? Uh, I'm sorry. Ken was asking what our what the flop was on Wednesday, and I said it was it was I remembered Ace Ten something with a flush draw. I think it was Ace Ten Seven. Okay. Yeah, I think so with the heart draw. Not the so I mean, a big blind was folding like eighty percent or something on that, right? So now, if the button bets small, what do you, how often do you guys think the the big blind is raising? And I want to ask those that were were not around this morning. That's why I kept my mouth shut. If any, and what do you guys not, not what do you guys do with like pocket five here from the big one? I think just call. Probably no. I'll probably raise it because it's too because it's a flush draw. What do you do with king six? Easy. Probably raise it as well. Well, actually, no. I'd probably probably be, well. Yeah, I'd probably raise both of those. <laughs> What do you do with in. King Five? I'd probably raise all of them. What and do you do with and you raise them flush eight, draws, I guess. Eight seven of hearts, open end door with a flush draw. Hmm. I'm probably raising all that shit. Okay, but check this out, Dizzy. You don't have a raising range here. No raising range. Okay. You just pure call. Okay. Or you fold. Did we figure out why though, what, what the reason was for that. Uh, there's still the cutoff left to act, and we want to like protect mm -hmm. our yeah. range with everything where we just call it. I guess it's it a... puts the cutoff in the box because I like in these spots, I feel like I'm boxed in when I get when this happens. Like, I just always pray that the big blind falls when I have something I want to keep playing, maybe start bluffing with, and uh, it just feels harder when the big blind stays in the hand. Thank you. If I'm if I was the big blind here and I had you know for instance seven eight of hearts and I got the straight flush draw I'm probably going to raise it in case one of them have like an ace of hearts and and they're looking at that back door you know um so I feel like I would want to like check raise this but that's why I'm trying to understand why why they're checking most everything unless they're just trying to get the most money from cut off that they can well. The cutoff raises, check raises a half the, half as often when we call. So that's, I think it just kind of puts them in the box with okay. a good portion of their range. No raising range from the big blind at all. No raising range. And It'll be I, interesting to see if we can find a texture where they do. Yeah. Right, it will be. Pair, low pair board, maybe. Uh, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Or like, Two, three, four. Like two to, yeah. Well, if two, we two look zones. at our worst calls, what I noticed already that like we call almost every five, but look at the nine. The nine, you know how the nine is a good card for the, the cutoff here. It says best, like the nine eye boards are the best for him. So having a nine in our hand is really bad. And the jack seems to be also pretty bad. So even the 10. So having a 10, a jack, or a 9 is not so good for us. Well, that's because of the cutoff range, right? That's what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the 9 is the key card for the cutoff. If the cutoff is heads up against the button, it's also a really good card if he's heads up against the big line. So having a nine in our hand is actually really bad. I think this like, one- look, look at this, like 10 of eight of hearts, 10, eight of hearts is pure folding. Is this what I'm seeing? Yeah. Oh wait, 10, eight, eight of hearts is up here. 10, eight of hearts is the only one that calls. Oh, so yeah. I looked at the off sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's the only one that calls. And um, we are folding with hands like pocket seven. That makes sense. The heart. But not if you have the heart. Yeah. Is it mixing if it has the heart? Is that what I see? No. Nope. nope. It, it, it calls it. Yeah. It, 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 that's not a mix. That's a. That's, that's not. A how often. Not in. Not in range or. or 
Oh, okay, okay. What kind of Ace Hardware do you call? Uh, seems like we call uh, Ace of Hearts. This would be Ace of Hearts. Yep. Yeah. Ace of Hearts and Ace of Hearts only. <laughs> and we call uh, pure. But why? Why not with the Ace Nine? Ace Ten can make the straight. The Ace top eight. straight. Okay, say can make the straight as well. Yeah, but the best they can yeah, make the Broadway best straight. straight. Although the other one's the best straight too. Well, no, it's not. It's not because it loses to ten jack. Yeah. It makes the because it makes the nut straight. And then I guess even like making a ten has some value. It's gotta have some additional value. Oh, we don't call it back doors. No diamonds. How deep are we? 50? Diamonds. All the diamonds fold. Yeah, we're folding 75% to a small bet. That is huge. Like, that's how much we, we would normally call like 60, 60 percentage versus a small bet versus the button heads up, right? And now we're, instead of calling like 60%, we're folding 75 like. It's don't we still overfold the big line versus the small bit? Yeah. Yeah, because you're getting odds pre-flop and then you just fold out overfold on the flop. Yeah, but like this texture, I bet if you look at this texture versus button, we're, we're probably only folding like versus that bet, probably like you know, 35 percent. You can pull it up in GTO. And it's only a quarter pot bet, so it's a very small bet. So he's polarized. Is this twenty? Is this? Are we again at twenty five seventy five percent? Why would you say he's polarized with a twenty five percent bet? No, it's he uses polarizing bet sizes. Is what I meant. I think like it's what it was oh, yesterday. Twenty five percent was the small bet, and seventy five percent was the large bet. We're all in. Right. So we fold every diamond. What else can we see here? What are we doing with uh, like seven, eight of clubs? Sure call. Sure call. Yep. Oh, so all the open and straight draws are calling. And we're calling most of the seven nines. Mo most gut shot with, with two overs to the middle card. Call every second pair. Most third pairs. I'm, I'm folding all fives here uh yeah i'm never defending a pair of fives i can honestly say that they go they can't get them up fast enough i definitely call ace five but yeah, yeah i don't maybe five and like my cool like nice. yeah ace five and then like five seven five eight the stuff that can back door straight right i call yeah, it and then fold, fold everything else yeah i mean i imagine i'm in there with my redraws Good redraws. It's like if a queen comes and all the money goes in, you're like, oh, that's my five queen good, or is it king queen? Right. Louis, let's take a look at that nine seven suited. So, I mean, you'd safely could just call the hearts, with diamond, and the diamonds. hearts and and a little bit of folding if you don't have the other yeah, ones. I would just call hearts and diamonds and fold the other two, honestly. Yeah, but look at it. But they, they call the majority of the time. No, I, just, I think it's just balancing probably like you're probably, you're starting to lose money. Like when I say it start folding, I think it's just good to get out of the way, right? I mean, you're multi-way. Okay. I think it's good to bail. All right. Personally, my opinion. I mean, I think the most important takeaway is that there's zero raising. Like, I'm sure all of us raise in this situation. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you massively overfold. All right. No raising and fold all your back doors.
Yeah, like they're really, good back, they're really good back towards can, can continue flush. Uh, yeah, back toward flush and straight. Had a couple overs to the section. Dang, around. I'd say right. take some discipline. Yeah. Yeah. If you have the, if you have the, yeah. So if no, with straight draw, just a pure backdoor flush draw. Mm -hmm. No raising for the big nine. Uh, so we either call or fold. Let's say we call. Now the cutoff. I have a question for you guys. Do you guys think the cutoff is raising more often or less often when the big line is in the box? Well, I already said I think he's raising a lot less. Yeah, just in general, because it's multi-way. Le yeah, less than heads up. Half as often, probably. So you guys think that with the big blind in the hand, we raise it less often? Yeah. I, that's, I feel like if the big blind's in the hand, we're going to raise a little more because he's in the middle, right? His middle yeah. position right here between the two. So he wants to either get out of the way or, or raise to get one of the other guys out of the way, right? Yeah. No, but he doesn't. No, the big blind doesn't raise. Are you talking about? So the big off. line's uncapped with his calling range. He's got he's got a ton of traps, right? So mm -hmm. it's a little dicey. I think that yeah. makes us more incentivized to raise because it yeah. when we raise the button has to be worried about the big blind waking up with something still. So if the button is going to be put in a tough spot when we raise, uh, and then even the big blind calls suddenly we're in position or in a big pot. Plus there's more dead money in there than if it's heads up. Exactly. That's kind of what I was thinking. The other Just thing not as is smart. Yeah. When we're heads up, I'm sticking we, to my guns. We've we've, op we've open raised, we've bet this flop some with some of our good hands. In this scenario, we've checked all of our good hands. So we still have That's, all yeah, of them. good good point as well. Yeah, but at this point, like king, a pair of kings but is it is good now because the button, the big line still has a ton of nut, like not a ton, but he has all of his nutted hands still. So all of a sudden, the value of like ace king, king queen, king jack goes down. But so we still have, have for all less, of our nutter hands too. If you're betting for less thinner value, then you have less bluffs, so you're going to raise less. Who has more nut hands, the uh, the cutoff or the big blind? The cutoff. Proportionally, the cutoff. proportionally, the I would say at this point, since the big blind holds seventy five percent of his range, I think the big blind proportionally has more nutted hands at this point. Proportionally, yes, I agree. We could be right it, now. But in general, we checked our whole range, so we still have all of our nuts as well. Right. We have more of the we have more of the nutted hands, and it is a lower percentage of our of the of our continuing of our range to this point. All right. So yes. here's what we found. So let's see here. Basically, when the big line calls the bet, uh, the cutoff is going to be raising a lot. 25% of the time. So he mostly, like, he, he check raise as much as he check calls. Okay. And what we discovered today uh, is that uh, when the big blind folds, we actually raise a lot less, 10% less. We call a lot more when the big blind is not in the head. Whereas when the big line calls, we raise a lot more often. So wait, when a big line calls, we raise more. When he folds, we raise less? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. So that kind of falls in line with what I said to where one, there's more money in the pot to win if we check raise. And two, because the big blind is uh, uncapped, the button has to be careful. So he's going to fold a lot. So it, it makes more sense to check raise when the big blind folds or when he calls. Okay. Also, the, the button was C betting more frequently than heads up, right? Right. Okay. A little, bit, I mean, a little bit in this spot. In my mind, that's more merit to check raise as well. That's kind of, yeah, it's still insane to me. So we're check raising. What's the worst king we check raise? Even like king, king nine gets in there. Tell you what, if I have like king jack right here, I am not check raising. I'm Who's just check calling. raising. 
Well, King five and King six, two pairs. King four, you yeah. can't even check raising King four a little bit. King seven, King eight, their slivers are in there. One of those are hearts. Right, yeah, that makes sense. I'm about to be punting off in multi-way. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Well, I have to check raise. I have to, have to check raise King four now. Don't do it. Hearts. <laughs> I came for I like that because you get better King to fold and there's a lot of merit. I don't and think you're you get super better live when you get called because you got the hearts, right? Yeah, you don't get better kings, kings to fold. fold. I don't know what you're up to. <laughs> is, uh, King seven of hearts, is that the only one up there that's um, raising as well? Yeah. Big? We got to assume that. Eight six raising, never doing that. Eight five raising, never doing that. And they're doing they, the pure. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Like, I wonder. So, what, what is it about eight six and eight five that pure raises? And eight, seven six, six seven five. five. All suits. Trying to get a six to fold and a better five to fold. And you have a back, and when it doesn't work, you have the back door to the straight. I wonder if it's because it's blocking a lot of the big blinds, nut combos that just splattered. King six, six five, pocket six. Well, I guess six. Pocket six is pocket, yeah. Well, we don't do much calling with fives here in general. We're like basically raising them all. Five, yeah, five, that's pretty interesting. Five. That's Eight, super five. interesting. H5 will call. H6. And it looks like Queen 5. five. Yeah. yeah our, five, we five, call five, all five. the Jack 5. Eight, all the Jack five. 5 we have, we call. 10 Jacks, Queen. Those so the lower 5. Yeah, uh, King out. 5 makes sense because it's 2 pair. But yeah, the lower 5s just want to get in. Raise up. I don't think they want to get it in. I think it's no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I misspoke. Misspoke. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has to be blocker, right? Maybe like. It's blocking even like seven, eight and stuff. That's uh, the big blind's gonna like jam with over the check check raise as a bluff. I'm actually curious to see what the big blind's response is when we check raise. See the combos he jams with. It's gonna have something to do with our. Mm -hmm. I think our bluffs are gonna have something to do with the hands he's, he's jamming. So to nine, what is that? Just top pair, decent kicker. Four and a half, four four point five x, right? So I think the reason why it's check raising like these fives is because you're still uncapped with your value range, like with pocket kings and ace king here. So it wants to have bluffs that go along with that. But because you're out of position to the last player, the button, um, you have to have some equity to your bluffs. So um, a five has a little bit of equity in that it's a pair and could improve to two pair um, and has some barrel spots where you can pick up the, the open-ended straight with um, a seven coming on the turn when you, when you bluff eight, five and eight, six. Why eight five over a heart draw? No, I agree all that, but I think it's also crucial that it's actually blocking sets. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, it's blocking the big blind sets. I think that's you know a part of it too. That's a good point. And then we have outs when, like you say, when we do have extra outs if we get called. So yeah, um, the this the uh, the blind. The, it particularly is stuck in here with all the, the flush draw. I don't think you want to be bluffing the flush draw unless you have the king high or the, uh, the nut flush draw here. Right? Because you're going to be flush over flush a lot in this spot because the blind's uh, going to continue with all his flushes here. Hey, Louis, how, how, how often are we raising uh, ASX of hearts? Ace X. 
uh, of hearts, like the flush draw, the nut flush draw. Uh, that you can't have seven these. suited, they say suited. The, 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 the way that the flush draws work, you race pure with the, the worst ones and you mix with the best ones. Yeah. Right. But take a look at take a look at Jack's seven of hearts. You were saying that we don't raise our bad flush draws and it's raising at half the time and calling it half the time. But it's raising eight five, five pure. Right. 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 Those right. are we well, yeah, have extra equity with the, like the Jack Seven though, right? Yeah, our, our Jack Sevens, like those ones are like they're if you if you think of constructing your range from the worst hands to your best hands, Jack Seven suited is in the middle so your worst hands eight five want to raise to parallel your pocket kings and jack seven's just in the middle with reasonable equity so it raises those last Who's calling with a pocket eight here after a bet and a call? No, never. Yeah. Call Jeez. pure calling with all the other pairs. I would fold queens. I would as well. I'd be tempted. Not with the Definitely queen of hearts. Not folding queens. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe with the queen of hearts I call, but all the other combos I fold. Uh, not not on a small flop bet. I guess it's a small sizing, but I just feel so bad. I'm waiting another card before I fold the queens, just so I can lose extra money and play it. Big line, <laughs> as as possible. But that is what I'm doing. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, like it's it's still reasonable here. You're closing the action. You can spike a set and have a strong hand. The turn is go check, check, check. When it goes check, 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 and then someone blasts on river. Oh, you yeah, got to suck out equity. You can always, can always turn GT. that magical queen. Yeah, yeah. If you have the queen of, if you have the queen of hearts or the eight of hearts here, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's reasonable. I think if, like, if you have a, a pair with a heart, sure, I, I might call, but I'm not pure calling my eights ever. No way, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not finding the the eight of clubs, eight of spades call there. I'm like, oh, this is a terrible call. I'm blocking bluffs even. Yeah. Okay. And then there's just this little area that I have a hard time. Like, it's for bluffing or worse, second pairs. Because look at how the six plays. Best ones, pure call, like queen six, uh, like the worst they get, kind of. Nine, well, six. the best ones have no additional equity. The worst ones can still make a straight. Yeah, I think that that's more important than, than the fact that they're the worst ones. I think it also, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think some of the check jam bluffs from the big blind are going to be like open and straight draws. Which when we have eight six eight five, he's not going to have, and we're also blocking his value hands, two pair and sets. Okay, so there is this portion of the range. Up. It's like bottom pair so, and, a, and a straight draw. Yeah. So Louis, the test would be if we were looking at a board of king six deuce, would we still be raising? That seven six seven five. I mean, we can also see the big seven, big six, blinds eight, response six. to our. We can also see the big bunch response to our check raise and see what his jamming range is and how our check raises interact with that, like our bluffs. Yeah. So we're sort of card matching too, right? Because we have all the sets of five sixes and kings, so we're raising a lot of our king x, five x, and six x. All right, so. Again, this is against our check raise? This is the button, yeah. Right, so the button raise re-raises nothing. Uh, jamming king six and six five. We're super polar, right? Yeah, so. that's it. 
He has no bluffs. But every... <laughs> no, he doesn't. What? Click on click on the all in and just see if he if no it and just see if there's if there's even a sliver of bluff. Slivers that looks like yeah, I know. Just click Ace on it. Three. Is it even anywhere? No. No. Oh. Uh, nope. Six, six, five. There are no bluffs. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. There it is. Oh, it's yeah, a little bit with Ace 3. Ace, four. Ace, Ace 7 in there, too. Ace 7 looks like it's in there a little bit. Just a tiny sliver, yeah. But it's just hard. It's so hard to read this thing. But yeah, Ace 7 and Ace 3. Well, yeah, Ace 3 of hearts half the time is going to jam it here. Yeah. Okay. So he's going to call with this best top pair, and that's about it. Chat. So let's say the button folds. Now I turn it back on the big one. Well, ripping it, huh? Now wow. this is real. He rips, the, he rips his heart draws. Yep. He rips the low heart draws. Got to start folding a lot of kings. So he he is ripping a, a fair amount of eight X and seven X. Eight seven suited, seven four suited, eight four suited, seven three suited. Are, all, nine, are those plus suited. draws only? Probably. Yeah, nine seven suited, and we block those with with our raises. So you're right about that. The seven eight, if it's suited, he he rips it, but not if it's not if it's just open ended. Yep. Eight seven a hard trips and the others call. Okay. Yeah. What about yeah, seven four suited? Is that the oh, same? Is that just hearts jamming? Uh what did you ask? King seven? Seven four seven four. Yep. Yeah, just hearts, okay. Uh, same thing with the three four. It's going to be yep, just just hard. Then four two, and three two. Um, so, how often would you even say that you see this kind of check raise or or uh, or yeah yeah check raise from the cutoff when the button opens like this, and you yeah. still get the big blind of calls? I don't know. Our pure call of eight six got immediately folded. All we could do is try to learn it and implement it as best we can and and then fix see how the other players react. Yep. Oh yeah. I mean, I think learning all this is useful, but I think we have to adjust majorly too, because the big blind in our games are gonna be check raising nut hands and bluffs. Yeah, so it'll be way more capped, which is great. When they are flooding, yeah. So like when we could we can start flying these check raises, I think they perform even better. Yeah, I agree. Oh, that's so really in our point, games yeah. whenever whenever button opens and big blind calls, since he didn't check raise, like in GTO they're not supposed to, but in our games they do. Mm -hmm. So it makes our check raise even more profitable. Wow. Can you can you explain that again? Uh, my brain didn't quite pick that up. Yeah. So uh, like all like like all of us said uh, at the beginning, like if you have if you're in the big blind and you flop two pair or a set or whatever. You're gonna check raise well after the button bets. We're yeah. not supposed to do that. So um, in our games, when the big blind is supposed to be calling everything, but he's check raising his good hands, it means when he's call he calls he's more capped. In this yeah, example, okay. he's not okay. because he's calling with everything. So when he caps himself, we get to check raise more profitably because he doesn't have all those strong hands anymore. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I just trying to make sure I understood it right. I right, appreciate it. Yep. So in that spot, we're going to be raising a crap ton that end game because we're already raising what, like 25%? Yeah. In the yeah. GTO scenario. Wow. Yeah. But I still caution to get too out of line unless you know the player is just going to play straightforwardly all the time. Like there's that, good players good that look at this shit too that are going to be have some traps probably. Yep. Kind of, it goes back to, yeah, we got to identify the villain always, right? Know who your big blind is, especially in this scenario then. Yeah. I had one of these three ways the other day 
after we had our session and I, and I did. Congrats, was she hot? (laughs) 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 Sorry, I didn't mean to kill the story. Just had to throw that in there. Oh, that's that's a much, that's a much better story. (laughs) It is now. Yeah. So the the big blind is gonna raise more often when the button calls a raise. When he falls a raise, uh, he raises a little bit less. Are you saying the big blind is going to Two raise and a half more often? More raising when the button folds. When or the button calls. button calls. Button calls. Yeah. Okay. And now we see we're just like. Folding pure with King Jack. And blasting value. And some really good draws, high equity draws. Do I call King Jack in game here? Oh, I don't know. I think I'm folding it. I'm scared at this point. <laughs> oh, fucking fish. I ain't folding it. <laughs> Depends if he's from Brazil or not. <laughs> Big Jack, man. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, Actually, a, I'm a, a nit multi away. Can't help it. Nice way I hit alone to be a little bit uh, more loose. You're saying I had a guy from uh, in position on the turn check raise me with Jack King, and I had Queen King off. And I ended up winning the hand, but I couldn't figure out, you know, his his check raise, you uh-huh. know, right there in position. It was weird. How did he check raise in position? Yeah. Oh, he didn't. Sorry, he he he, he raised my my yeah. turn bet. My uh, it wasn't a C bet. It was just my turn bet. Sorry. No, you're fine. Not as many as I thought. We don't fold pairs for one bet. Uh, a lot start. They start folding a lot, and we can't. We don't know the EVs of the calls here, so they could be super marginal. Oh, he's not. Yeah, like King Queen's calling some, but it's not really calling any kings. Most of them are raising, right? Yeah, most of the calls here look like just like draws. Yeah, and like a little bit of fives, okay. a little bit of King Queen. This is also against the solver. So versus that uh, cutoff is not check raise, raising enough. These are just punts, a lot of them. Yeah. So the big blind is folding anything under a queen eye flush draw. And even most queen eye flush draws are folding. Like look at queen jack of hearts here. Oh, wow. Uh, Queen nine mixing, but like we can make the straight. If we can make the straight with it, it starts to play a little bit, but it's probably like very close to no EV here. And then like most queens are just like folding. Yeah, he's folding all those draws. Most people, oh my God. What's the, go. what's the best the hand he's just are, calling? He has like no six, nuts when he calls. Set of fives. He's got fives a little bit. Oh, That's okay. why he's protecting his calling range with the set of fives. Yeah, and a little bit king sure. queen. Huh? And we've already determined that almost no one's going to have fives after the flop anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or King Queen for that yeah, matter. Right? I'm, yeah. I'm, I, if I'm the big one, I'm check racing King Queen there. It's our best king. Yeah. That is true. So I, I look at it, I'm actually, like, okay, well, it's, I got my best king here. I got a raise, right? Like, I mean, I three bet squeeze it too pre flop. So I don't even have it that much. <laughs> Oh, so you definitely got to defend King Jack. Yeah, King Jack Here. might be that raise for you then there. God, I'm terrible. Let's squeeze. I've already squeezed with King Queen here and maybe King Jack. I call King Jack. A lot of, do a lot of, no, late, against late position, yeah, I would do a lot of squeezing well, with King Jack. I would do a lot of folding with King 10, but I'm playing it 
in a cash in this way. scenario, I'm folding, I'm folding every king, including king queen. So let's see. What? Free. To that late position? It's not folding one. Free flop? He's talking about, oh, he's talking talking about, about now. No, no, we're talking yeah, about yeah. pre-flop. Yeah, calm down. Never. I, I'm. That's me. I'm always folding king queen. So, Nick, king queen is mixing. It's going to actually jam like 15% of the time or so. King At queen 50? Line. Uh, 40. Louis, are you talking, Louis? Are you talking about you fold king queen pre flop? No, no, no. I, I would have right. honestly, we're, we're I would have check raised it from the big blind on the flop. But if I make it here, like I call the small bet, and then if you misclick, then you call it instead. This guy's raised five x or four and a half x, and this guy calls my top. Oh, yeah, then we fold. Almost oh, yeah, never go lose. That, oh, yeah, so. yeah. So King Queen's a pure squeeze at 60 and it mixes a little bit of jams and calls at 40. We're at 50 here today. Yes, you're in between. Yeah, so I mean I mostly squeeze, I call sometimes. So should be yeah, should be good. Reasonable. So should we look at how this spot plays differently at another stack depth, or should we look at yeah. king high boards? I'd rather uh, look uh, there's no other king high ones. Uh there is. Let's keep doing king and just make a different texture so it's harder for the big yes. ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Changes to that. yeah. Do a king eye focus today and just check out how different texture, textures change everything. We only have one king eye board. Oh, so <laughs> okay. take my head. We can back to the ace We did the ace show. So they do like ace eight three. We're I paired. Think this, this board here is going to be extremely. That's going to be really good for cutoff, I imagine. So and it's. Decent. Or we can do a jack eye board. Why would they give you the option to select we'll it? Do a dry high. flop, like an ace high dry or, or a paired flop. Or like a paired big flops are always flop. fun. Like the nine nine six, the nine's good for cutoff. Paired flops are good for that one. We should, yeah. we should do like nine nine six, ten ten three, and eight eight five. Okay. I don't care what we do. Okay. 